Skidoosh, skidoosh. Welcome back to the channel. Joey Moss with good old bad boy gaming. We got one of every standard showdown prize pack ever in existence. Ever. This is really, really cool. The hype is real. I've never done this before. These are not cheap to come by. Uh, this is definitely more expensive than opening a booster box for sure. Standard showdown prize packs you can acquire at your local game store if you participate in standard showdown events. I believe they're on Saturday they are held. So I did not go there. I went through the black market, of course, or the eBay out there. eBay is like the only one you can purchase these from that I'm aware of um, that's online. If there's another one out there, I'd love to know about it. But they're also making those collector booster packs, and those things are going to be really fun to open as well. I've already opened a few on the channel, but we're going to see, I believe, next set, we will see actual collector packs uh, doing the real thing, and they'll be distributed throughout for all to obtain instead of just in a limited market like Japan and at Meyer locations. All right, enough of all that. Let's get into opening these. This is really cool. I love Standard Showdown. If you go back, you can see I've opened I've probably 300, approaching 350 Standard Showdown prize packs. Value-wise, I'll go over every single one of these and tell you how much they are actually worth in the, the secondary market. And what I believe is, you know, their least valuable ones to the most expensive ones. It, honestly, the Amonkhet... The Ixalan, these ones are pretty low balling. Rivals of Ixalan's pretty low as well in comparison to the other ones here. Uh, the core set, not not too much value, not crazy there. Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance is coming around the mountain. Dominaria, Hour of Devastation are definitely way up on the list for value. So we're going to put those guys up on the top. Uh, it's tough to say between Dominaria and Hour of Devastation. I'm going to go like this though. This one, Kaladesh. This one is the most expensive because... There's not many of them out there. There simply is not. They're hard to come by, and the people who have them are going to charge you a lot of money if you want to get them. Honestly, they are simply not worth purchasing, period. Now, starting with Amonkhet, I'd say these are one of the most least... Um, the, the least value is probably inside the Amonkhet and Ixalan ones, and the Rivals. Uh, Inventor's Fair, really cool card. This pack goes for about $9. You should not pay more than $9 for one of these packs, but as prices go up and become more scarce, uh, well, as become more scarce, prices will go up. You got an Inventor's Fair with the Kari Zav's Expertise. Isn't this one card? I thought that was reprinted already. In one of those sets, or maybe it's another Kari card. Pretty neat, though. Gain control of target creature or vehicle. It's one of turn and tap it. It gains haste in one of turn. You may cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. That's really not too bad. You gain control uh, of a creature or vehicle. If this was still in standard, that'd be pretty nuts and uh, abused, I'd say. We do have a full art planes. Just a basic full art planes. And that's the one that was reprinted. The Kari Zev's Sky Shipper Raider. The cool thing is... It is a foil rare. They put the foil rare in here. These packs are always juiced up. So we got three rares, one being foil. Pretty impressive stock, I'd have to say. That's why the collector's packs, I'm just so pumped for. I really honestly cannot wait for them. We got the Ixalan Standard Showdown prize pack. What are we going to find inside of here, my friend? Sunburn's Invocation, really cool card. Whenever you cast... Uh, whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. So yeah, you want to throw in some heavy hitters and just blow up the board. Sunbird's Invocation is a really cool, really powerful card. Disallow. That is another really nice counterspell. Counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. Talk about a counterspell with a lot of abilities. <laughs> or a lot of versatility, really. Counterspell is a nice one. Weld Fest Engineer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. I mean that's that's something. I like that it's at the beginning of every combat. That's not too that's not really too terrible. And we got the Rebecca Gay Swamp. I love this one. One of my favorites by Rebecca Gay, I must say. I must say, Rebecca Gay is one of my favorites. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Also, anyone that shipped me anything in the past week, I am very sorry. I have not shipped it back to you yet. I even have some of them packaged up. Um, just me and shipping. Oh, this is terrible. The arrivals of Excellent. Really, really, really. Um, I have not shipped it back yet, but it will be coming out this week. This week, I promise you, I'll be returning all the goodies. The collector's boosters and all that other stuff. 
So thank you very much. Kari Zev Skyship Radar. Again, we've already seen this sweetie over here. Not bad. Dispossess. There's another, this didn't seem like a play. Choose an artifact card name, search targets, opponent's graveyard hand in the library for any number of cards with the chosen name and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. I mean, that's something, you know, you got something. And then we got a full, or not a full art, just a normal foil planes, Rebecca Gay yet again. And a Sky Whaler shot. Again, the three I just opened are the ones that usually contain the least amount of value among these. Sky Whaler shot, destroy target creature with power three or greater. Scry one. Scrying one was pretty cool. Scry one has been replaced. We don't scry anymore. We do something else. Can you tell me what else we do? Score set 2019. This one I had higher hopes for. Every time they drop one of these, I get really excited and I'm like, oh my God. There's gonna, they're, they're gonna juice these suckers up. I just know it. And sometimes they do. Now we're getting into the more better of these, um, where the value is usually increased and you can pull more expensive, nicer, funnier, shinier, more rare foil cards. It's really interesting. Gilded Lotus, add three mana of any one color. Already, our value is climbing. Pretty sweet card. Nimble Obstructionist, another pretty good card. It's got the flash and the flying, the cycling. This thing has a lot of abilities. And then when you cycle, Nimble Obstructionist, counter target activated or triggered ability, you don't control. Really, really neat. Um, the Elena Danner, rhymes with Tanner. Um, Swamp, which is gorgeous to look at, very breathtaking. Just took my breath away, honestly. And the Legion Lieutenant Foil. Now, this is where they started making the uncommon slot uh, more, I think they put sort of put more value in the uncommon slot in this, uh, in Core 19, and Dominaria. Dominaria and Core 19, I think, is when it started. Pretty sweet. Legion Lieutenant is a very good card. Other vampires you control get plus one, plus one. If you're going Vampire Tribal, you're going to have yourself a Legion Lieutenant times four in there. Ravnica Allegiance. This sucker just dropped. What awesome sauce can we find in here? That's right. Increased value. We have a Temple Garden. Forest Plains. As you guys know, the Shocklands are pretty awesome. The artwork on them is pretty nice. As the Temple Garden enters the battlefield, you may pay to life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. A lot of people ask the question, why are Shocklands even worth money? Like, like, what is good about Shocklands? I don't run any of them. And I felt the same way when I was a new player. I didn't understand them. Well, if you're running a multicolored deck... And it's turn one, and let's just, or even turn two or turn three, doesn't matter what turn it is, really. But let's say, just for instance, turn one, you have yourselves like a Lana War Elves and another, um, and let's say on top of that, you can either choose from Lana War Elves or on the right you have like uh, a Legion's Landing, which is a one drop also. So you have two one drops. You drop this sucker down, which one do I use? I don't know. Um, it's up to you, whichever one's going to apply. Maybe you saw your opponent do something, you know, and you need to counteract that. Obviously, most people are going to go with the Lanoir Elves to have three on the next turn. Another better example, let's say it's turn uh, turn two. You have one of your, your legendary cards. You only have uh, a forest out or, you know, maybe, maybe not even a forest. Yeah, let's say you have a forest out. It's versatility, guys. Then you can bring this out. You could pay the two life if you need that right now. Let's say you need the planes right now. And the other card you have in your hand is just a plain forest. You know, you need that two mana because the casting cost is requiring one of each. Well, this only pays for one, but it's one or the other. It's versatile, guys. It allows choices, and it allows you to get those choices instantly at a sacrifice. A sacrifice of two of your life. You have to pay it. Deputy Sphere. As you see, value is increasing, my friends. Deputy of Detention is really cool. When Deputy of Detention enters the battlefield, exile, target non-land permanent opponent controls, and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name as that permanent until Deputy of Detention leaves the battlefield. Very powerful card, especially against tribal builds. Now we have a mountain, which is, these are gorgeous. Believe these are going to go up in value. Um, this is the first time I did something different with them without just leaving this background here plain. Notice this skadoosh. They thought of me when they made this. I'm not kidding. Go out, go contact Wizards. We had a talk. I'm like, hey, man, Skadoosh. And they're like, we're going to put you on the artwork. I'm like, thank you. Skadoosh. And they did that. It was That, that didn't happen. Uh, even the fist right here. Skadoosh. I swear, they, they jocked that from me. It, it's, it's just something I'm just saying. Dauntless Bodyguard, as you see. Um, the uncommon slot, it has, has more, uh, more valuable uncommons in that slot. More sought after ones. At least for while the standard time is present. Guilds of Ravnica. Let's get to cracking, baby. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking up some heavier heat. What are we going to get up in here? 
We have the Regasaur Alpha. It's a five drop. Other dinos you control have haste. When Regasaur Alpha enters the battlefield, create a 3 3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. Powerful. Very powerful. I was hoping some, some awesome Gruel deck would go off of this thing, but in the Gruel decks, never gonna top eight. I don't know. Boom! Hit some with a Doom Whisperer! Shut the f up! Oh, baby! Doom Whisperer was at 25, 24 bucks. I stood you. We just got one. Uh, but now it's down to about 10, 12. You know, it has taken a little hit. It's being, uh, it's not being played nearly as much. Uh, it's got the Flying and the Trample. Pay two life. Surveil two. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Pretty sweet card. I must say that Doom Whisperer is pretty sweet. We got the Full Art Planes. You know what's ironic right now? The value is continuously just climbing every time we open a pack right now. <laughs> and uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles, baby. We got the Planes uh, from Elena Danner. Rams with Tanner. And the Eldest Reborn Foil. I don't think I have one of those. That is so sweet. Oh, baby. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Each opponent discards a card. Put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Look at that sauce. Pretty nasty. Pretty nasty indeed. Uh, patrons, just a quick little, little something here. You guys are still going to be receiving things at random in the mail. That's just how it's going to go down. So just keep an eye out in your mailbox. You know, every now and then, like some, a few of you at random are going to receive something. Just, just a heads up. Moving forward, moving forward. Aside from whatever's listed on Patreon. Moving forward, moving forward. Let's get into cracking open Dominaria. One of the bigger, uh, better ones. Um, that just, you could pull something ridiculous out of here. Hour of Devastation is one of those as well with huge value. We have Temet, Vizier of Nektaman. Pretty cool card. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature uh, creature token you control gets plus one, plus one, plus one of turn, and can't be blocked this turn. And Balm. That is one ability. I was asked last night in the Twitch live stream, what do I miss about, you know, like, what's rotated out? I miss the Embalm mechanic. Embalm is a really cool mechanic. Exile this card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a white zombie human cleric with no mana cost. Embalm only has a sorcery. It made it so these cards just kept coming back, you know? Really, really cool. Very cool indeed. The Mending of Diary. All right. So put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield and shuffle your library. Shuffle your graveyard into your library. I could see something like this even playing in a gate deck. I mean, I don't know why no one's using it in a gate deck yet. It, it would make sense there. You got a Swamp here by good old Mark Poole. Classic Mark Poole. And a foil inspiring vantage. Not bad at all. Wow, that is gorgeous. It was worth a lot more during its standard, but it has rotated out. I don't think a lot of people like the artwork on this set, uh, the land wise, um, opposed to like other other sets. I'm just saying, I, I kind of noticed a trend there. And the inspiring vantage, although, yeah, it's one of the most recent <coughs> lands of its kind. It's gone down a bit. <clears throat> it's uh, it, it definitely kerplunked, you know, compared to other sets. We got Spirit of the Hunt. Flash, when Spirit of the Hunt enters the battlefield, each other creature you control, that's a wolf or a werewolf, gets plus zero, plus three until end of turn. That really helps out, I guess, blocking and stuff and defending, you know, but just it never saw much play. No, it just never did. Uh, we have the Dimensional Infiltrator. Now, Hour of Devastation is usually one of the bigger batter hitter sets that you pull something really stupid out of. Dimensional Infiltrator is a cool card, but not nothing crazy. We got the planes here. Oh, and by the way, all the other packs up until now, Dominaria is going for about 13 bucks, roughly, $13, $14. Um, every other one, Ixalan, Amonkhet, all those ones are going for about 10, uh, 9, 10 bucks. Hour of Devastation is going for about 10 bucks as well. 10 to about 13. I'd pay more for an Hour of Devastation over the other ones though. Defiant Bloodlord Foil. Simply because I believe there was a lot, you almost always guaranteed a rare foil in here. Now, yeah, Defiant Bloodlord's not that great of a card. Well, no, it really is a great card, but the casting cost is just really freaking high. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, and it was printed to heck. I mean, these things appear just everywhere. And the Groundskeeper. Love the foil art on that, though. That just is breathtaking. Look at them leaves. Is that leaves? Is that dust? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but that's a magical to me. That screams magic. Return target basic land card from your graveyard to your hand. We kind of biffed on the Amon Cat or on the uh, Hour of Devastation, but that's okay. Now these right here. This is Kaladash, Aether Revolt type of stuff. Standard Showdown. When it all started, this is the OG of these. And they go for a ridiculous price. Um, you can't really find any of these for less than 20 bucks. 
only because they're old, they're scarce. They should not be selling for $20 though. They're not worth purchasing unless you're gonna keep them sealed. Maybe try to sell them you know, down the road, I don't know, from an investor standpoint, but definitely not worth buying if you're gonna open them. And I'm gonna show you why right now. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I doubt it. Here we go. There's just usually no value in these things. You just get kerplunked. We got the Torrential Gorger. Trample, whenever you get one or more energy, Torrential Gorger gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Yeah, they had energy in Magic, which upset me because I'm like, this ain't no Pokemon, losers, all right? I want to play some Magic, not Pokemon. Energy just reminded me of Pokemon. I couldn't do it. It didn't stick with me too well. Retreat to America. It was like America, you know, America. Yeah. All right. You got the landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Put a plus one, or put a one-one white core ally creature token on the battlefield. Also, creatures you control get plus one, plus one to end of turn. Pretty legit. The Munda Ambush Leader. All right, look how far back we're going. This is all the way to Battle for Zendikar. Just an, uh, it's just a bulky, crappy card. You know, Mundu Ambush Leader. What does it do? Haste Rally. Whenever Mundu Ambush Leader or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may look at the top four cards of your library. If you do, reveal any number, blah, blah, blah. Who cares, man? It just stinks. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Don't ever purchase those uh, Kaladesh ones. They're just filled with a bunch of crap you don't really want. The cow just ate the revolt. Now you'll know. You learned something new today. I hope you have. This has been my experience from opening, uh, again, about 350 or somewhere crazy. I don't know the exact number. A lot of standard showdown prize packs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's very unique. We went through history. The history of standard showdown. Skadoosh, skadoosh. And how we got our actual skadoosh up on a card. Skadoosh.